FDB Film Study is sponsored by Happy Valley United. To learn more about how you can support Penn State student athletes NIL opportunities, visit happyvalleyunited.com today. What's up, guys? Today we're going to talk about a dismal third down conversion rate of Penn State. And we're going to talk about why. Why they went one for 16. Ohio State was in Drew Aller's head. The coaches knew exactly what was going to happen. I hate it, but let's break it down. You know the drill. Like, subscribe, comment. Let's do this. So I'm going to take you through the third downs. Okay, here we go. Now we're third and seven. We're in a little longer situation. We're in a tight end trip set. Okay, and I want to show you something. Okay, again, you know the coverage probably pretty well, except I see him kind of peeking. Okay, but it looks like we're looks like we're in man. All right, so we're getting a switch concept here. We're going to get a vertical concept here to break it over the top. This was a this was a straight beater. Okay, this is a what we call a rail read. He is going to run the rail, and then he's going to break it off if that guy's playing over the top of him, which he was. Okay, you can see it. Watch what happens right here. It look how he just breaks this thing off. Okay, sets it down. It's just a bad throw. Terrible timing. Don't like the way it happens. Now. Let's talk about the footwork on this play. And I want to show you something really important here. Watch how he uncomfortable he was in the pocket. He takes his drop. Look at the slide. Watch him slide his foot up. Oh, he's already lost it. Look how far back his foot is. His base is too wide. He's already doing things he hasn't done the previous six games. All right. Look how he's getting antsy. He's getting antsy. He's getting antsy. He sits in the pocket. You can feel his pressure, even though the protection is most definitely there. Watch when he throws the ball. Look at his feet. He's squared up. He doesn't step into his throw. That ball, look at this. This is not the Drew Aller I've showed you the previous six games. That ball just dies on him because he had zero, zero footwork and hips. I'm going to show it to you from here so you can see it. Low snap. This was an issue all game. Watch how he sits back. Watch the slide. Oh, there it is. Look at how he's stepping himself up. Watch when he throws the ball. Look at his feet. Guys, if you've never tried to throw a ball like this, this is almost impossible to throw a ball, especially one that's on the opposite numbers on this hash at about 20 yards away. And that's almost like a 45-yard throw. I'll just say this. It doesn't matter how strong your arm is if your feet aren't right. Okay, here we go. It was third and one. And this is where I think we got a little too complicated. Right now, we're three for eight for 31 yards. We run a very simple rub concept. Okay, you take a look. It's very simple. They're just going to rub it off. He just takes a one-step slant underneath. Watch the footwork. Remember what we talked about his foot? Look at how he's squared up on his base. Look at how he doesn't step into his throat. All right, I know this ball gets tipped. I know it gets tipped, but it shouldn't matter. This ball should be an easy step into. He should have had time to drill this ball inside. I get it. The ball's tipped. It's no excuse for bad footwork. And no excuse for this terrible positioning of his throw right here. But that ball should have been nowhere near this window. That ball should have been here inside of this window right here. He's rushing things. Now, could you have run the ball? 1,000%. Now, I know that their average per carry in this game wasn't that great. But I'm sorry. But if you've got two five-star running backs and an offensive line who's dominated for the most part in the run game, you've got to learn to trust them. Okay. Okay. Now we're in scoring territory. It's second half, five minutes left to go in the second quarter. You have moved the ball. It's third and five. We now get into a tight end, all right, wing set. This is a very basic run set for our offense, and Ohio State knew it. Watch the defense trigger with zero concern for the pass. Guys, it goes with an understanding. This is a safety that runs in and makes the fit. They don't have enough guys to the play side here. This play was doomed from the beginning. Let me go back and show you something. Okay, if I'm going to watch this play from the beginning, it should be simple, right? I should be out. I should be out. I should be out. We're going to run this thing here. We're going to run this thing here. We're going to run this thing here. And he's going to wall the backside off. Here's the problem. Because they had more guys in the box than you could account for and you didn't block the safety, you have no chance to be successful. I don't like the play call. You could tell Ohio State knew when run was coming as opposed to pass. There's some tendencies I think that Penn State probably needs to fix, um, and I just showed you one there. All right, third and 10. Again, now we're in negative territory. You're getting exotic fronts, so watch what happens, okay? You get a bad snap, which is like the fourth on third down. All right, here's Drew Aller. He's looking. He's looking. 
This is nice. He's actually trying to get himself in a situation where he sees some success. But the quarterbacks and wide receivers are not on the same page. He needs to set his feet because this guy right here should have gotten that ball immediately, and he took off for no reason at all. Okay? And so I want to talk about this. Nice job stepping up into the pocket. Nice job keeping your eyes downfield. But I want to talk about the fact that I know for a fact that Drew Aller was most definitely not in his groove because any other time he would have thrown this ball right here, and he didn't. Okay, here we go. Third and two. It's still 10 to six. We're in a good situation. Now we're in a tight end trip set. We're going to bring a guy in the box. You know exactly what they're going to run. It's very simple. You know when they bring this guy in the box here, they're going to get themselves into a running formation. It's the same stuff. Here they go. All you're doing is bring another guy to the party. You have one, two, three, okay? Four, five, six, seven blockers. They have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine guys in the box. This is not going to be successful, especially knowing that the safety who has rolled himself in the box is, again, the unblocked defender. And now, again, you have zero chance to be successful. You took a man who was a man-to-man. -man, you blocked somebody on the backside that had nothing to do with the play, and you brought a guy in the box. I don't like it. I do not like bringing guys in the box against man-to-man. -man. I don't like the play call at all. It's very frustrating to see how much of a tendency they have when they run the ball in third and short. Okay. All right, we're third and long. They're going to bring the exotics. Here they come. And I'm going to tell you something right now. I know for a fact that Drew Aller did not step into this throw. Right now, look where you're at. That's not good. Okay, here we go. You've got a man-to-man, -man, one -on one-on-one route concept here. They're going to get a guy over the top of the twins. Watch the footwork. Look, 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 look. See how he doesn't step into the throw? He feels pressure inside. But look, see how the hip stays back? Usually, I told you before, when he throws this ball, he's going over the top. He's getting his hips over his ball. This ball dies on him, and it's embarrassing because he had he had the corner beat by a yard. And number one, has to come back to the ball to try to make play. Now, should that have been pass interference? Yeah, I could have called it. But if the quarterback would have just stepped into that ball, you had a chance to be successful. Okay, it's third and one. You got in quads. Nobody thinks you're going to throw that ball out there. Nobody. I'm sorry. But if I'm your sitch, I'm going to the straight T. I don't know what he's thinking in this situation. You're sending all this motion and shift, and you're going to throw the ball on third and one. I, I just don't I don't get it. The play design wasn't bad. Um, it was actually pretty good. But again, it's eight. I mean, here's my issue, okay? You've got a quarterback who has absolutely not found a groove. Look how he throws this ball. He throws it behind the guy. You got a, you got a running back who, honestly, he probably could have made this corner miss. But he's struggling to find the ball as it is. I just, it's a struggle for me to watch this. To me, this is making things harder than they need to be. Okay, fourth quarter. Now it's third and 15. We run a concept that has a chance, but our five guys can't block their four guys. So what does he have to do? He has to check down on third down and 15. Again, I think if he holds this ball a little longer, let's talk about the concept and the routes. All right, this is the old drive route concept. You have a guy underneath. You got the dig over the top. You got a guy playing here, and you had a guy taking the top off the ball. Okay, I know the situation is as follows. Just up to me. I'm not throwing the three-yard ball. But again, the protection doesn't hold up for Drew to look downfield, and he dumps it off. Third down and three. You still in a one-score game. You are dang near midfield. Look. Why do you not run the ball? He's 10 for 23 for 118 yards. He's been on the struggle bus. It's not hard. Literally. Just give the ball to the guys that run the ball, all right? The concept's not bad. This is what we call the old snag or spot concept. You're going to run a corner by the by the number three. You're going to run what we call a spacing hitch by number one. You're going to run a flat by number two who's going to turn it into a wheel, okay? Against man-to-man, -man, this should have been a rub route. It wasn't. He turns. He holds it. This isn't there. This isn't there. He should have thrown the corner out, honestly, in this situation. But again, my thought process is he's freaking out. I want you to look at the footwork. Look how he's bouncing, bouncing, bouncing. Look at this. Wide feet, tucks the ball, doesn't know where to go. He's looking for protection. He doesn't know where to go. At this point in time, he's just throwing the ball to throw the ball. Okay, here we go. It's third and 30. I'm not wasting my time looking at this. I'm going to say it again. Third down and 30. Nobody's converting a third and 30. Okay, here we go. The one third down conversion they made. 50 seconds left to go in the game. They're in two by two. They're playing off. Notice they're not playing a man. They're just playing like a quarter's coverage. Oh, look. 
we're just going to throw the out route and complete the ball. Crazy part, it wasn't even a good ball. Uh, this is the frustrating part. Like, if he steps into this throw, he doesn't have to fall down to make this catch. Look at the footwork. Watch what he does. He sits back, watch his feet square up again. Drew Aller was off all night, and, and really so was the entire offense. 